Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And thank you, Jesus. It's around that time right here on KAZ Radio, where I have one of my most favorite shows, Perfecting Your Relationship with Jesus Christ, hosted by Tony Allen. Take it away, Tony. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome to another uh, broadcast of Perfecting Our Relationship with, with our wonderful, awesome Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. It is such a beautiful day to be um, in the land of the living, and, uh, and it's always a wonderful, it's always a wonderful experience to be able to come before God's people and to share his heart and to allow the Holy Spirit to nurture us, to develop us, and to increase us in the knowledge, the understanding of our wonderful Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, for the last couple weeks, a month or so, we've been talking about the mind of Christ. We've been talking about allowing the Holy Spirit to develop our minds or allowing the Holy Spirit to teach us what it's like to have the mind of Christ. And we are going to, in a somewhat matter, continue down that road in developing our mind of Christ. But today, we're going to talk about being free in Christ. We're going to talk about developing and growing in the freedom of Christ. And we all know that we cannot develop or grow in Christ's freedom until we understand his mind, until we understand the nature and the character of Christ. So today the Holy Spirit is going to open up the word unto us. He's going to um, unpack and just increase us in understanding what it means and what it looks like to grow in the knowledge and, and, and understanding of Christ so that we can walk in freedom, so that we can walk victorious in this wonderful Christian journey that he has left us here to do. But before we do that, we want to open up in a word of prayer. Father, I just come before you in the name of your precious son, Jesus Christ, thanking you, thanking you, Lord, for the opportunity to come again to talk with your people, to share your heart with your people. Lord, I ask that that you will just open up the scriptures, that your, that your word will come forth as fire, and that it will quench our heart, that it will, it will create within us a desire to be transformed into the image of your son. Father, I decrease so that you may increase in me, O oh God. I pray, Lord, that every word that comes forth out of my mouth will be anointed, will be ordered, and will be seasoned by your precious Holy Spirit, and that not a word shall fall to the ground or be void of power, but produce exactly what you intend for it to do, which is to encourage us, to increase us, to transform us into the image of your Son. In Jesus' name I pray and I thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. All right, then, as we said, we have been talking about um, the mindset of Christ. We have been talking about developing developing the uh, characteristics or the traits of a, of a Christ-like mind. And today we're going to talk about freedom, whom the Son make, made free is free indeed. I don't know about you guys, but I love being free. I love the freedom that Jesus Christ gave you, that he gave me with the completed work on Calvary. Jesus did all the work for us, all the work. But it's up to us to maintain it, and it's up to us to sustain it and to walk in that freedom. It's up to us to walk in the freedom that Jesus Christ has has um. Wrought for, us, wrought for us on Calvary, or completed for us on Calvary, on Calvary. And in order for us to really know who we are, our true identity, we cannot really know who we are or our identity unless we, unless our identity is aligned and connected with Christ. And that comes from knowing the mind of Christ. I mean, we quote these pivotal scriptures in the Bible. We quote them. They just roll off of our tongues. But the Lord is saying, do you really understand and know what you're quoting? Do you really believe what you're saying? And that's what God wants to do with us today. He wants to unpack his word unto us so that we can understand, so that we can understand what it really means to be free in him. He wants us to really understand what it means when, when the scripture tells us in John 8, 36, that whom the son made free 
is free indeed. He wants us to understand what it means to identify with Jesus Christ so that we can know who we are. Beloved, no matter how well you may think you know yourself or how well you may think you know others, if you are not aligned and connected with Jesus Christ, you really, I really do not know who I am. I really do not know my true identity because our true identity as believers is in Jesus Christ. God gave us his word. He gave us this word right here. This word right here is our compass. It is our it is our it's our guideline. It's our template to navigate through life. He gave us the Holy Spirit to empower us to be able to live a successful, to able to live a productive and to live a victorious life in him. God intentions from day one, from the beginning, was for his, for his precious gem, which is you and I, to be free. To be free from the mindset of this current world. And in order to be free from the mindset of this current world, we have to know and understand the mind of Christ. As we have been talking about in, <clears throat> excuse me, in Philippians 2.5. Let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. But we need to understand what that mindset looked like. We need to understand the traits and the characteristics of that mind. And then once we understand the traits and the characteristics of that mindset, we need to allow the Holy Spirit to begin to develop within us the mind of Christ so that we, too, can be pleasing unto the Lord. And as we have said in previous broadcasts, that Jesus Christ is our perfect example of how to live a life that is pleasing, a life that is totally surrendered, a life that is obedient unto Lord. He is our example. No one else but him. So we're going to... Um, we're going to dive into the word of God, but before we, we're talking about freedom, and I want you to keep that in the forefront of your mind. We're talking about developing and growing in the freedom of Christ. And remember from, from previous broadcasts, we talked about the mindset of Christ because that is very important if we want to grow and to develop in Christ. It does not come automatically. We have to, there, there's an agree, there's, uh, God gave us the ingredients or the formula that we need, that we need to do in order to grow, in order to develop in the freedom and in the mindset of Christ. And before we get into our lesson, when I'm talking, we're talking about freedom, and we're talking about, as I said earlier, um, in John 8, 36, whom the, whom the Son made free is free indeed because Jesus came to give us life and he came to give us life to enjoy to the fullest abundantly. And so many of us as God's children, we are not enjoying that or that, that abundant life that he so desired for us to enjoy. And that's because we have not totally understood or understand what it means to grow and to develop in freedom in Christ. And we, we and so many of us, unfortunately, are like the children of Israel. God delivered the children of Israel out of, out of Egypt. He delivered them out of slavery. He delivered them out of, bond, uh, out of bondage. And I'm being intentional and on purpose because I want us all to sit back and to think where we are at in our Christian walk. God, if you gave your life to the Lord, he delivered you from bondage. He delivered you from slavery. He delivered you from Egypt. He delivered you from the world. But just like the children of Israel, God delivered them from slavery. He delivered them from Egypt. But he could not get Egypt out of them. They, he delivered them out of Egypt, but he couldn't deliver Egypt out of them. So many, there's a whole generation of the Israelites died in the wilderness because their mindset had not 
developed. They did not allow God to develop their mind so that they can fully trust him, so they can fully get to know him. Well, let me say, not say fully, because we would never get to fully know God because he's just so um, exhausted. He's so huge. He's so grand. But the Holy Spirit, as I have said in previous broadcasts, he does allow us if we desire to get to know him incrementally. He reveals himself to us as we begin to draw nigh unto him and seek him out. He will begin to show us parts of his multi-dimension, uh, multi-dimensional care, uh, nature, but we have to want that. So the children of Israel, they did not have a desire to want to know him. So what happened, a whole generation of Israelites, after they got delivered out of the world, after they got delivered out of bondage, still end up dying in the wilderness because of an undeveloped mindset. So God, so the question for us today is, how many of us allow God to deliver us from the world? We accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We went up there to that altar or at home at our, on our knees or wherever you were and asked him to come into your life, but stopped right there. And I continue to reiterate this on most of my broadcasts because God wants us to know that there is more to our Christian walk than accepting him and not following him and not uh, spending the rest of our life allowing him to develop us, the rest of our life being discipled by him. There is so much more to God, so much more than God want each and every one of us to experience all of that. So we don't want to be like the children of Israel. We don't want to just uh, be delivered from the world, but not allow the Holy Spirit to take the world out of us, to change our mindset. And in previous broadcasts, we talked about renewing our minds by renewing our minds in the word of God. So today, <clears throat> we're going to start our foundational reading in the book of Gal 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 Galatians, Galatians, I'm sorry, Galatians chapter 5. And remember our title, Developing and Growing in Christ's Freedom, or Developing and Growing in Freedom in Christ. It's all about freedom. It's all about being free and enjoying that freedom to the fullness. So let's start with um, uh, verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ have made us free. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Please, please uh, uh, notate that scripture. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ have made us free. Christ have made us free. And he says, stand fast in it. He said, he says, hold on to it. Don't let it go and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Because even though Jesus Christ has set us free or made us free there, there, I mean, with all the cares and the, the, uh, the anxieties and the things that go on in the world today, you know, uh, tending to children, tending to our jobs, uh, tending to just, 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 just so much. There's so much, there is so much that we can focus on that will cause us to lose our, lose our focus from Christ. And it can cause us once again to get, or to be entangled again. And I love that again with the yoke of bondage. We allow people put us in bondage. Things put us in bondage. There is so, I mean, there is so much out here in the world today that will, if we're not careful, we will allow it to distract us from Christ. And we will allow it to distract us from doing the work of the Lord. And what happens when we lose our focus on Jesus and we're no longer focusing on him and his agenda, we're no longer focusing on the things that are above, as we said in the previous broadcast, to set your heart, to set your affections, to set your mind on the things above. If we allow things to begin to distract us from that, we can become uh, captive again. We can become entangled. We can become sn uh, snar snarled again, snared again. 
with the yoke of bondage. And then we're not walking in the freedom that Jesus Christ fought and died for us for. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. And if you don't remember anything else from this broadcast today, beloved, I ask that you remember that Christ has made you free. He's made you free. Now it's up to you to continue to fight for it, to maintain it, to hold on to it. Uh, stand fast. Stand on it. Be unmovable. Be unshakable. Don't allow the distractions and the cares and the anxieties and the worries of this world to distract you and to put you back in bondage or to keep you enslaved in the thought process of the world or your own mindset. Constantly continue to renew your mind with the word of God so that you can always stand in the liberty and in the freedom that is yours. Another scripture that I want us to turn to, we're talking about freedom. We're talking about growing. We're talking about developing. And I also want to throw maintaining, maintaining our freedom. Because trust me, I have said in previous broadcasts, the enemy is watching us. He's watching us. And although he may not kill or destroy most of us, trust me, if we take inventory, we have allowed him to rob us of something. And my question to us today, is it our freedom? Have we allowed Satan to rob us of our freedom by not standing firm in the liberty that Jesus Christ gave us? He made us free. I encourage you to don't take things for granted, but ask the Lord, Lord, show me. Have I been robbed? Show me the areas of my life. That, are, that may still be in bondage. Show me the areas of my life where I am not walking in your total freedom. Free, free, freedom. I want to turn over to um, 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 317. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Be, brethren, be followers together of me. And mark them which walk, so as ye have us for an example. For many walk, in verse 18, for many, oh, I'm sorry, wrong verse, wrong scripture. Let's go, I'm sorry. <laughs> Slow down, Tony. I know most of you said, what is she reading? Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Here it is. Now the Lord, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Now the Lord is that spirit. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is is freedom. If you are saved, if you are born again, and the Holy Spirit dwells in you because Ephesians one uh, thirteen tells us that when we give our life to the Lord, that his Holy Spirit comes and indwells within us. So if you are born again, the Spirit of the Lord is in you. So right there tells you that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Freedom. It's in you. Keep it. Do not allow the enemy to rob you of it. Do not allow the enemy to deceive you and thinking that everything is okay when everything may not be okay. There may be areas that's in bondage that you want to seek the Lord for. And this is ongoing, saints. It's ongoing. That's all part of discipleship. That's all part of a lifelong process in following Jesus Christ. Salvation, that's the first step, the very first and critical step. But following Christ and being a disciple and learning of him and allowing the Holy Spirit to develop us, allowing the Holy Spirit to, to uh, increase us in the knowledge and understanding, that that is a lifelong process. And that is going to be something that we're going to be doing until the day that Jesus come, uh, come back for us. Growing and developing in Christ's freedom. 
And I love this. Now, the now the Lord is that spirit. The Lord is that spirit. And you remember in previous broadcasts we were talking about, because we're still talking about the mindset of Christ, but this is just an extension of that, because once we develop the mindset of Christ, once we begin to take on his attributes and his characteristics, um, the Christ-like characteristics begin to be reflective and displayed in our life and in our behaviors and in our action, then people will begin to see Christ in us. And remember, just for those of you who may just be tuning in to us, I do encourage you to go back and please check out some of the uh, previous broadcasts where we identified the six characteristics of a Christ-like mind. Because let this mind be in you, developing your mind into the mind uh, 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 or aligning your mind with Christ is what's going to help you walk in freedom. It's what's going to help you develop and maintain and grow continually, continuously in the freedom of Christ. Those Remember, those six traits were an active, a, a live mind, an active mind, a mind that is single-minded, a mind that is lowly, in, lowly, a lowly mind or a humble mind, a mind that is pure, a mind that is responsive, and a mind that is peace. Those were just the six that I identified as I studied the life of Jesus, but I encourage you as you begin to read and study the life of Christ that you as well begin to identify uh, attributes or characteristics of his mindset that you can begin to ask God to develop in you because Christ is our perfect. He's the only example of what it's like to to uh, surrender, to be obedient, and to live a life that is pleasing to God. And as we read and we study the scriptures, we see that Jesus Christ, he was free. He was the most freest, if, that, if that's a word, the most freest human being that walked earth. You cannot get any freer than our Lord and our Savior was. So we definitely want to watch it. We definitely want to look at his life. We definitely want to emulate him emulate him. You know, when you, uh, uh, when you're trying to be like someone or imitate someone, you study them, you watch them, you, uh, you study, you watch how they move, how they talk, how they walk. You know, every great, like uh, LeBron James, he wanted to be like, I uh, like say Michael Jordan. He studied, he watched, uh, Michael Jackson, he loved uh, James Brown. So he studied, he watched uh, James Brown moves. We want to be like Jesus Christ. So we want to study and we want to watch Jesus Christ. We want to see, we want to see how he talked. We want to see how he walked. We want to see his, we want to model um, his actions. So we're going to study his life so that we can be like him. And as I said, there was free, he was totally free, totally free. Yes, we know he was God, but we also uh, learned in the scripture, I want to say in uh, Luke chapter 1, verse 52, where it tells us that he had to grow. He had to grow. He had to develop in the things of God. He had to grow in stature. He had to grow in favor with God and with man. So Jesus Christ had to grow in favor with God and man, just like we are doing. We have to grow and to develop in the things of God. And who do we want to watch? Who, who should we be watching to em emulate? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Um, as we were saying, Jesus was free. He was purpose. He was pur his, his walk, his journey. He was purposeful and he was focused. As believers in Christ, as we continue to talk about being free, as we continue to talk about developing our mindset and being free in Christ, we we too have to be focused and we have to be we have to be focused on the things of God and we have to be purposeful with our life. Jesus came and he fulfilled God's purpose. Each and every one, I say this many times, each and every one of us have a designated assignment a purpose that God has called us to fulfill. And we and and and, and it's uh, it's up to us to remain focused and to remain purposeful in our journey and our walk with Christ. A Christ-like mind is single-minded. It is focused. It does not get easily distracted. 
It, stay, it, it seek the Lord as Jesus did. He, we, we see his life. He was always before the Lord, always praying. Uh, uh, um, if, you, if we want to stay free, we need to always be before the Lord, seeking his mind, making sure that our desire and our will aligns with his will, aligns with his desire. When we, If we want to stay free, if we want to grow, continue to grow and stay free in the Lord, we need to always make sure that we're about our father business. As he said, I'm about my father's business. That needs to be our story or our, that needs to be our verse every day. When we wake up in the morning, Lord, what would you have me to do today? How can I be about your business? Because keep in mind, we're talking about being free and staying free. Whom the son make free is free indeed. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty and God is in you. So that means there is freedom. That means there is liberty in you. And it's up to you. It's up to me to make sure that we be obedient, that we surrender to the Lord so that we can maintain, so that we can continue to walk in that freedom. There is victory in freedom. There is victory. There is victory. I'm not talking about um based on your external circumstance or what you see with your natural eyes going on outside of you. I'm talking about an internal victory. I'm talking about that internal peace. It's about God God works from us inside out. So just because all chaos, just because all hell literally may be breaking loose around you, that does not mean that you have to lose your stance. That does not mean that you have to lose your stance of victory because God we're not fighting for victory. We're always fighting from a position of victory because Jesus Christ already gave us the victory. So keep that. That's our mindset. Remember, we're talking about freedom. We're talking about the mind of Christ. It's all about redeveloping our mind, redeveloping our perspective on life so that it, so that it aligns with God. Well, that's somewhat ends up. We, we're running out of time for today. But uh, before we before we close out, we want to I want to just encourage you today. Um, if you remember nothing else, whom the Son makes free is free indeed. And if you have the Spirit of the Lord in you, you are free. But for those of you who do not have the Spirit of the Lord in them, for those of you who do not who do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to give you this opportunity today to accept Him right now. And I encourage you to repeat this prayer after me and mean it in your heart because the word tells us if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus Christ is the Son, is the Son of God and is Lord, we shall be saved. Father, I come to you in the name of your precious Son, Jesus, acknowledging that you died, acknowledging that you sent your only begotten Son to die for my sins, past, present, and future. I acknowledge his completed work on Calvary. I know that I cannot save myself. I ask him to come into my life, to be my Lord and my Savior, and to forgive me for all my sins. I repent right now, and I want to stop trying to live life my way and live life your way. I accept your free gift, your son, to be my Lord and my Savior. If you said that prayer and you really meant it, you are now in the family of God. But it does not stop there. That's just the beginning. And now the rest of your life, you want to focus on getting to know him, getting to develop it, getting to develop in him so that you can maintain your freedom. You want to find yourself a good word teaching church. You want to stay connected to the Lord. You want to pray and you want to get into your word and watch God continue to grow you, increase you, and develop you in Christ's freedom. Everyone, thank you for listening to us today. Have a wonderful weekend. May God bless you and continue to teach you and show you the greatness of our Father. In Jesus' name, I pray and I thank you, Lord. Amen. <music>